Hey everybody, welcome back to Ryan's Trumpet. Um, today we're going to dive into a very dangerous topic, the basics of a healthy embouchure. If you haven't had a chance to yet, go hang out with episodes one through five. They really are foundational to having today's discussion about the embouchure benefit your playing. The embouchure itself is a response mechanism. It's the setup behind the embouchure that is going to be the most important uh, physical thing for bringing the embouchure into a place where it is ready to respond with elasticity and freedom. That if I bring my tongue into a healthy place to play and I allow my jaw to follow that placement, then I am going to set up for an embouchure that is responds easily and does everything that I need to do and stay healthy. So for, for most trumpet players, thinking about it as a response to certain stimuli will yield healthier results. So before we dive into the physical side of things, the foundation is present mind. Uh, being aware of our breath, aware of our mind, aware of our body, a soulful, creative signal of some kind, depending on how you like to frame that for yourself, and a very, 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 very clear uh, sense of song, which means hearing the pitch super accurately, of style, which often has to do with phrasing, and a deep sense of internal rhythm because motor skills are all about timing and that's what we're practicing they're not about strength it's all about timing so when we talk about a healthy functioning embouchure those things have to be in place and without those in place it's worthless to talk about the embouchure uh, or darn near worthless <laughs> so What's the danger of talking about the embouchure? I'll tell you what the danger is. It really can be different for a lot of us. And so the principles that I'm gonna introduce you to today are the principles that have been the most helpful for the most students that I've taught um, over the last 17 years. I don't know that I've actually met someone who is truly an exception to the principles that I'm gonna um, introduce you to today. Uh, that said, there are so many really helpful ways to think about setting up the embouchure. So please keep a super open mind and recognize that the real trumpet guru is two things. First, if your sound is getting more resonant, you're moving in a healthy direction. And second, that it's easier to produce it. It takes less work on your part to produce that resonance. So those are the true trumpet gurus um, that, will, that will guide you in your individual approach to the instrument. So the embouchure to me is not just the lips. The embouchure is the entire network of muscles from the, the edge of the nose down here to the corners, down to the tip of the chin here, that whole network of muscles there, um, the, the muscles that go along the sides of the teeth, um, the teeth themselves, the jaw, and the mouthpiece connecting itself to our teeth. That entire unit is how I conceptualize the embouchure. All of it works together to set up to receive or respond to what's happening behind the lips. We're going to conceive of the embouchure as this network of muscles whose job is to attach through firmness of varying degrees to the bone structure in our face, our teeth, our jaw. That's how we're going to think of the embouchure. Uh, it's hard to know where to start to talk about those specific parts because all of the parts interact dependently. Everything happens and influences each other. Nothing is separate in, the, in playing the trumpet. Um, nothing is separate in playing the trumpet. It's all connected and every what we do one place impacts what happens in another place. So 
So we want to keep that in mind as we move forward and talk about individual parts, is that they really aren't separate, nor are they individual. But it can be helpful to think about some of those parts that way as we try to get closer to an Amisher that responds freely and easily and allows us the freedom to do what we want to do uh, as musicians on a trumpet. The first non-separate part that we're going to talk about is the teeth. Uh, which is really important because our job as trumpet players, when we, when we set up, what we're really trying to figure out how to do is set up the lips so that they interact with the structure of the teeth in a way that allows for a free response and easy playing of the instrument. So um, to me, I think that a helpful door into understanding what to do with the teeth can come from my own experience with injury. So for a lot of us, um, we, we learned to open our teeth at some point, maybe a very, very well-intentioned band director said, open up your sound. And we thought that literally meant to open our teeth. And so we figured out how to play with our jaw, not here, but open. And we got what felt like a bigger sound and we got a thumbs up from someone at some point, which encouraged us to open our teeth I want to kind of shout this from the roofs. If you're opening your teeth excessively to play the trumpet, you're setting yourself up for injury. Um, the other really common place that I see students and where I actually injured myself pretty seriously about five years ago because I was still doing this, that we somewhere learned that if we, that we could control volume with our teeth, with the gap between our teeth. So when we played soft, when I played soft, I would place my teeth closer together, and when I played loud, I would open them. So something like this. So you can see the jaw moving to sort of create a bigger opening for the air to fall through. To, and I would do that, not realizing I was doing that in order to increase volume. Don't do that. For the vast, 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 vast majority of us, that is a risky move and one that will um, eventuate an injury and certainly did for me. We basically want the teeth to be as close together as they can be with a free exhale to play the trumpet when we move around. notice that the jaw will move some uh, and I am still unlearning the habit of opening so please be kind as you watch these videos of me playing and recognize that that as like anything it's just a snapshot of where I am in my evolution as a player but the jaw will likely need to move for virtually all of us uh, like more than 90 percent but it'll move front to back rather than moving up and down. If we're opening to go low and closing to go high, obviously there's going to be an unnecessary ceiling on our on our upper register and lower register because you can only open so far uh, or you can only close so far. So opening and closing the jaw, I have not seen that benefit the vast majority of the players that I've worked with. Um, rather, we want to think of the jaw moving forward and back. Uh, to help us move up and down. You can see as I'm going down that the jaw does need to move forward and um, that's a really important part of the mechanics of the embouchure. One of the most important and misunderstood aspects of the embouchure is where to place the mouthpiece when we play. Of course inside the mouthpiece we've got the rim and basically what we have to make sure is that the way we may place the mouthpiece makes it so that the inside of the rim on the top and the bottom is outside of the lip tissue. So basically we've got this we've got the soft lip tissue here and around that is a big band of muscle and that band of muscle is where we want to place the bulk of the mouthpiece pressure when we set. So it's really, really, really 
really important to make sure that where you're placing the rim of the mouthpiece is outside of that boundary between the, where the lip meets the face on the top and on the bottom. Uh, if you place that mouthpiece in the softer lip tissue, you are setting yourself up, one, for tearing and injury, two, for really low endurance, and three, for a, thin sound, a thinning sound as you go into the upper register. I will say as a caveat that there are some YouTube videos where players talk about placing the mouthpiece in the lip tissue and they say it's not a problem. I would point out that I don't know any crossover artist who needs to have a clear classical articulation as part of their repertoire that can play that way. Um, if all you do is play sort of big band jazz, you might be able to get the colors that you need like that if you're a rare exception. Um, but for those of us who need the ability to have a really clear, immediate response in a classical context, as well as playing other styles, um, that won't work. I've, or at least I should say, I've never seen it work. <laughs> so, um, but I'm so open to being proven wrong. And if it did work, it would be a huge exception to the general rule. This mouthpiece, this is my mouthpiece placement. And you can see that the, that the lips, that the, that the border of the lip, if you take a look at that, is inside, the border where the lip meets the face is inside the rim of the mouthpiece on the top and the bottom. So where students get into trouble is when they play like this. You can see that in this case, the top, the top lip, the rim is literally set in the soft lip tissue. By the same token, although somewhat less risky, uh, if a student places the mouthpiece in the soft tissue of the lower lip, um, they can find themselves getting into trouble. So really, truly, for the vast majority of us, we need to find a, a mouthpiece placement that allows the border where the lips meet the face to be inside the rim of the mouthpiece. Uh, the other much debated thing is does it matter left to right? It really doesn't unless it's really extreme. Um, everybody's teeth are different. So where you place the mouthpiece on the face in terms of left to right really won't matter as much. What will matter <laughs> is if it's so far over that the player is putting most of the work on one side of the face. You're basically cutting yourself off from having support from two groups of muscles the way that would be helpful. So, mouthpiece placement, the really big one is top to bottom. Left to right, really not a big deal as long as it's not super extreme. And, and the thing that would guide you in that situation 100% is your real trumpet guru. Resonant sound, ease of, and uh, ease of response.